in this video i am going to talk about some of the data science projects that you can do in the insurance industry insurance industry creates uh, a lot of data a large amount of data as we all know and it has been using quantitative research uh, for a very long time now people who are uh, known as actuaries have been working in insurance industry for uh, many decades now they are quantitative researchers who use statistics and mathematics to price insurance products and to quantify risk so data science in in some ways have been there in the insurance industry for a very long time even before probably other industries started using data science so some of the um, you know non traditional uh, quantitative research that that you can you know sort of pursue in the insurance industry is what i am going to talk about here apart from the traditional uh, you know actuarial research work all right um, so the first one is consumer targeting so this is more to do with uh, uh, marketing in the insurance industry so um, insurance uh, comes in in different product forms so there are various types of insurance product that there with insurance companies and customers do not actually know which product is very suitable for them okay and uh, you know the the problem that most customers face is 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 that they do not quite know uh, who to approach who to go to to uh, get to know uh, what's better or what's the best you can simply study the behavioral data of customers so you have search data on google or other search engines social media data that is getting generated whether through facebook or twitter um, or any other social media profile so you can actually study the product preference okay and then recommend the best product for for a, for a given client and that's how you will uh, increase the conversion okay so you will have this con competitive advantage when you provide a suitable product for the customer and customer has been facing this issue that's the pain point of the customer and if you are able to solve that you will be in 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 an advantage position over your competitors second project could be you know risk assessment and and pricing Obviously, risk assessment and pricing is something that actuaries have been doing for a very long time with the traditional statistical modeling techniques. But with with the in, with the additional data that we are getting nowadays, with the all the social media or internet data or mobile data that we are getting nowadays, can well be used uh, to do risk assessment and pricing. So we can use quantitative risk. Uh, we can quantify risk of of the customers, and and then accordingly we can set appropriate premium. Okay. Now that's basically done through historical data, but we can also do it on a real time basis without taking much of much of time. Okay. So uh, one example could be you know uh, getting behavioral data of drivers. You know, so people who are you know driving vehicles. Uh, you provide them some kind of an electronics instrument that will you know generate data the way the driver is driving and by by doing so you are incentivizing drivers to drive really well and then you charge insurance accordingly people who are driving really well you can actually charge them a less premium compared to people who are uh, careless drivers okay so that real time data analysis uh, wasn't possible if, if, you know when um uh, statisticians or uh, actuaries used to do traditional data analysis with historical data but that's now possible with you know so much of advancement in the electronics industry and in and in the internet industry where we can collect data very easily so this is more granular uh, risk profiling okay so we are getting into the details of the customers and getting to know their risk profile and the more risky customers should be priced higher than the less risky customers okay so that we can get to know through the variety of data that you know sort of is getting generated nowadays in the customer relationship management uh, we can also use uh, data to better handle customers okay and and one example could be better claim management 
claiming is is a big task for customer and that's where companies can differentiate themselves because people do uh, complain about uh, you know refusal of claims and uh, something goes wrong because the uh, the customer service officer did not quite solve the problems of the customers and that's the reason why you know people uh, tend to get dissatisfied and then start complaining and that brings bad reputation uh, to the company so this can be automated okay so uh, data can be used to prioritize claims okay so people who want uh, or people whose claims is more important and is very straightforward you can simply automate that and uh, that could be some kind of an automatic approval okay instead of a manual check an automatic approval which is like a fast track or a quick settlement that will make customers very very happy and they will you know be uh, with the company for a long time if they do not have much problem in in settling their dues let's say it's for a very small amount and there is a clear case of documentation you can then get data directly from the their medical transcriptions and then look at the bills and everything get the data convert your text data into electronic data process that and then you know build sort of a model to ensure that the probability that it is actually a true claim without having um, any issue with that if that's quite higher then you simply automate it you simply uh, auto approve it okay so automatic approval is what you are trying to do here the next one is customer retention uh, this is something very common in any consumer uh, led companies uh, where you are directly um, dealing with co uh, con consumers not necessarily with uh, consumers even you can you can apply the same with uh, smaller companies uh, smaller organizations as well so you have tons of uh, customer data uh, behavioral data both uh, customer demographic or income uh, and risk profile data as well as behavioral data such as you know what customer is up to uh, what's his facebook status uh, and many things obviously nowadays you know getting social media data is also becoming difficult more difficult because of the you know the recent scandals and all but still you can get a lot of publicly available data um, and then you find out the probability of churn you find out what the chances of a customer moving out of uh, the company and going to the competitors and thereby you can simply reach out to them and convince them uh, about uh, the uh, good things that you are, you are going to do in future so that they will be retained so you should know beforehand right so that's the motivation behind customer uh, retention model uh, fraud detection okay um, that's important in insurance industry uh, like uh, the banking industry fraud is a common thing in insurance industry uh, much like banking industry so many insurance claims are basically fraudulent claims okay and that's what is costing uh, the insurance companies a lot of money okay so it, it's costing billions of dollars uh, to the Americans and European uh, um, insurance company now if you can build a model around what's the probability that a given claim is a fraudulent claim if that you can build then that would drive a lot of uh, fraudulent claims uh, into investigation and eventually that will reduce uh, the uh, loss amount right so that's an interesting project many companies are now doing it at a very uh, or investing heavily into fraud detection in insurance industry um, for a long time this has been been happening uh, manually but now it's um, it's getting uh, people are investing a lot to automate this so that you know a lot of um, uh, a lot of fraudulent claims can well be captured without much of labor without much um, manual investigation we can also automate underwriting so underwriting is basically you know providing uh, insurance for the first time to a customer so you simply scan the risk profile and then you write uh, a contract that you will be paying and the company will be paying 
given uh, some uh, event that that's going to happen whether it's uh, health if it is health insurance then it's something to do with health issues if it's a life insurance then it is uh, something to do with uh, uh, life uh, uh, you know death of someone or casualty so um, so underwriting is a very manual process it's very manual you know Pe there are uh, many people who are underwriting specialists in insurance industry and uh, that is costing a lot of money to the insurers uh, because that's something very uh, rather um, you know um, straightforward okay it's process based the more process based uh, but somewhat judgmental as well okay so while the process based can well be automated without much issue you can simply write the business rules the judgmental aspect is something that's where you know companies have been struggling for a long time but now with so much of data we can use uh, you know predictive models to find out the chances of a customer um, having a good profile and and then um, providing uh, loans without have without having any manual investigations so much like credit scoring right many companies provide loans um, without having this manual check right uh, the score customer if one has high score credit score then they are granted loan much like that same thing can be applied in the insurance industry as well so digital data is available to companies nowadays so that can be harnessed cyber crime okay cyber crime is also very common in insurance industry um, much like banking industry where people are stealing data customers data or uh, very key financial data um, from the company's databases okay so to protect customers data it's important to ensure that uh, there is no cyber crime and the precautionary measure that the companies can um, can use is to have some kind of an early warning indicator okay so so predictive models can be built around such e such you know events where the the ml system or the machine learning algorithm would be able to predict um a cyber crime a cyber threat before beforehand before it happens and and that's when uh, you know uh, the security analyst can take necessary measures to avoid that it's very difficult by the way it's not as easy as the other models I talked about, because cyber ex uh, people who do, um, you know, cyber crimes, they are very experts. They know how to manipulate uh, systems. So it's extremely critical and extremely uh, important uh, thing. But this can well be tried. And by the way, many companies are already in process of investing a lot of money uh, to uh, create a very highly intelligent early warning system that can uh, save them a lot of. Um, time money uh, and reputations so these are some of the projects that you can try building uh, if you're working in the insurance industry thank you